welcome to episode two of Matt's World. I'm your host, Matt, and thank you for coming back. Lockdown really was the ideal time to launch a podcast. A lot of people have said to me, wow, you're so brave for doing this. And as soon as they did, I was like, is this something I should be scared of or worried about? I've made a few updates to this week's episode based on some feedback from you all. The main thing being that you wanted it to be longer, so this one's a little bit longer and um, we've got a bit of discussion time at the end with some of your dating questions as well, which is fun. This episode's going to be focused around being stood up by a date, so you'll hear from me and my friend Sam on two different tales of treachery. One of them is quite funny, the other one more recent and a little bit less funny but the lesson from both being that it's okay to laugh at yourself and it's important to be honest about this stuff because stuff like this does happen to everyone hence the launch of this podcast hence its creation it's important to just yeah realize that we're all living the same experiences over and over and if we're not talking about them what's the point because we can't learn from them and we can't learn from each other so yeah I think another key thing from my chat with Sam was highlighting the importance of being kind to people. So especially around these times in lockdown, you know, we all got to stick together and all that sort of thing. But it's important to me to like keep this conversation going. And we've got a little community building of lots of people that want to share their stories. So yeah, please do get in touch on at madsworld.mp3 and we can chat about it. I also wanted to chat to you guys because in last week's segment, I had a little speed date round with Dan, quick fire questions with Dan, and a lot of people wanted me to answer these questions, so I thought that might be a good place to start for this episode. So question one, how long have I been single? So I've been single since about September last year, Um, came out of a relationship with someone, it escalated really quickly, it all happened very fast, and then I ended up getting cheated on, so... That was quite a big thing for me to get through. I don't know if I'll talk about it on the podcast, maybe in later episodes when I'm a bit more confident about this whole thing. How many relationships have I had? So I'd say I've had three serious relationships last year and then a guy back in Australia that I was with for four to five years before I moved to London. And then, yeah, just high school relationships, that type of thing. How often would you say you go on dates? So a lot of people wanted me to speak about why I even have the authority to be making a dating podcast and that kind of thing. So I think when I moved to London initially, I didn't really know anyone. I knew Sam, who you'll get to hear from shortly, but I didn't really have any other friends living here. So I I probably went on like three dates a week from dating apps just as a good way to get to know people and get a feel for my way around the city, get to see some cool like tourist attractions, all that sort of thing, get to introduce myself to some new bars and restaurants and that kind of thing so um and then yeah I think the next two years I was just really enjoying my single life going on lots of dates dating people at work and then over the last year lockdown has sort of brought everything to a not a halt but it slowed everything down quite a bit and then what's your usual type so this one I was excited to sort of pen down and think about what actually is my real type all my ex-boyfriends have pretty much looked really similar they've all been like tall yeah tall dark and handsome I suppose but I've dated all kinds of guys in London I usually chase after dirty musician types as my friends would call it slim musicians live in a crack den that sort of thing so I'm sorry if you're a musician and you're listening to this because you've just been pigeonholed and I've probably been on a date with you so right up next is my chat with Sam We used to live together in London. She's from Australia and you're really going to like her. So I'll catch you after our interview. Enjoy. Hello, Sam. Hello, Maddie. How are you doing? I'm really good today. How are you? I'm also good. The sun's shining in November, so it's good. I know. Global warming has its perks, doesn't it? (laughs) Indeed. Okay, so for the people playing at home, we're going to do what I called in the first podcast, the quick fire round, but I've renamed this the speed date because I thought it was more on point for the podcast. So first question, why don't you give us a little bit of background on how we met? So we've known each other a while now, Mads. Um, We met at La Trobe University. Shout out to anyone listening from Melbourne. Anyone from the UK will be like, what is that uni? But hey, we move. (laughs) We were just two blonde misfits, I would say, walking around totally lost. I think either you asked me or I asked you, 
do you know where this lecture hall is? And we were both like, nope, but let's look together. And then we just happened to have every class together after that because we're so in sync. Literally, it felt like we'd known each other forever. And then, yeah, we've just been like besties ever since. And it's stunning by us. (laughs) So let's get into the juicy stuff. How long have you been single? So not very long, actually. Um, So since about early July this year, I've been single out of a sort of long-term relationship. Um, I haven't been on the dating scene till about September because I took a little time off, you know? you got to take a little time off and get your shit together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so how many serious relationships have you had apart from your most recent one? So only one other actually. So I've only really had two serious relationships in my life. I've had a lot of like seeing each other for a few months, moments, assuming they'll be a boyfriend, but then they're not somehow. So They never are, are they? <laughs> No, no, no. So how often would you say you go on dates now that you have recently come out of your relationship? So I counted this because I was not sure. So I've had I've had six dates since September, nearly like one a fortnight. But you know, it's like peaks and troughs. So sometimes you go on like two in a week, and then you won't go on one for like three weeks, right? Yeah. And it depends on the experience as well. Sometimes you'll have a great date and you're like, dating is amazing. And then go on 500 dates and then you'll have one terrible date, which I guess we'll get to shortly. And you're suddenly like, I never want to go on dates again. I hate all men slash women and dating is not for me and I'm going to be alone. I'm fine with that. Yeah, exactly. Huge mood. And so what would you say your usual type is? So hate to say it, but like everyone will say it. Tall, dark and handsome just tends to be what I would say I initially go for. So I like them to be taller than me. And I'm 5'7", so I'm not a short girl, but I'm not super tall either. So it's not too hard to find someone taller. I like darker hair usually, but again, I'm not opposed to, you know, a sandy blonde. A sandy blonde. And you know what I was going to ask you as well? Do you think your type has changed over time? No, not really. I mean, I've definitely seen guys who look different to that. Um, So I've tried, you know, a few different kinds. Just (laughs) dabbled, dipped your toe in in the boy pool. Yeah, but I tend to just more like, I don't know, fall for that type, I guess. Yeah, I feel like I've only ever really dabbled in different types of guys by accident, whether their hinge profile or their Tinder profile looks different than them. And I show up and I'm like, you are not like what my head said you were like. Yeah, you are not the dirty rocker that Maddie was looking for. Oh, Jesus. Right. Well, I have asked you to come on the show today. Oh, there's a fly. Go away, fly. I've asked you to come on the show today to talk about being stood up because you had an experience a few weeks ago, which reminded me of something I went through a couple of years ago, which was quite hilarious. So I think the best way to talk about this is I'll go through my story which is a bit funny and then we can go into what happened to you a few weeks ago so how does that sound that sounds good the more tragic second (laughs) the more tragic second so that we can kind of build everyone up tear them down and then hopefully leave them with with some helpful advice (laughs) bit of structure to it cool so a few years ago I matched with a guy on hinge let's give him a name should we call him let's call him George because that's just a nice strong English name and there's a lot of Georges out there so hopefully people won't be able to track this person down so his name was George and I've learned pretty quickly through talking to him just on texting and everything that he was a multimillionaire. or so he said So (laughs) when we were getting to know each other, we were, you know, having video calls, all of that kind of thing and texting quite a bit. He was telling me about his job and I just want to play for you now one of the voice notes that he shared with me. (laughs) I'm uh, I'm sending this as a voice note in the, uh, hopefully it'll prompt you to send one back. Uh, What is, what is being an investment bank retail? In short, uh, my job is to spend money, uh, as much money as possible. Um, anywhere between uh, one to a hundred million a day. Um, in you know, I, I spend and invest in stocks, bonds, market um, currencies, businesses, litigation, uh, anything that's going to make me a, a return on my money uh, of a sizable sum. Uh, generally, start work at six a.m. Uh, by two, three o'clock, I'm generally out with clients, usually in the Ned. Uh, all the hydrant, somewhere in the city, some obnoxious bar um, until about six o'clock and then I go home. It's, uh, it's a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy with it. 
Okay, so this was George, one of George's first voice notes to me. And I didn't really know what to think at this stage because, you know, he's got the accent. I've seen a few photos of him and, I mean, I'd probably give him about a 7 out of 10. He wasn't bad looking. But then considering the fact he's a multimillionaire, you could say I was pretty interested. And, I mean, if you are really a multimillionaire and you're spending £100 million a day, I don't think you would be going to the Ned. I really don't think you'd be taking clients to the Ned. No, I was going to say there's better places in London. Like the Ned is not the best. I mean, it's not the best if you're spending a hundred million a day. So we kept talking and he started planning a date for me on a Tuesday night. He said, it's a one of a kind day. You've never done this in your lifetime. You won't believe what it is when I tell you. So that Friday, we had our work summer party at my old work, which was at the Jeffrey Museum in Hoxton. And it's a little bit of a festival vibe. And I'm texting George and he's saying, oh, I'm out too. Um, I've had a few drinks and that. Do you want to meet up after your summer party? And so, of course, I was like, yeah, but I don't want to, you know, ruin anything before Tuesday's date. And he's like, it's okay. Like, we'll go for a drink and whatever. And so we went for a drink and it was in Mayfair. So obviously a bit of a stunning area, a bit of a... Best on the Monopoly board. Best on the Monopoly board. That's such a good little tidbit of information. And so, yeah, we went for a drink in Mayfair and he said, I've crashed my car today. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, one of my four cars. I'm like, okay. And he goes, one of which is an Aston Martin. I'm like, okay. And he's like, but luckily it wasn't the Aston Martin. It was one of my other shitter cars. It was a Jeep. I was like, okay. So... (laughs) He said to me, I've left the keys for my apartment, which is next door to Tiffany's in Mayfair, in the car that the car towers have taken away. So I have no way to get into my apartment. So I've booked the penthouse suite at Hilton on Park Lane if you want to come and stay and have a drink. And I was like, sure, that sounds stunning. So we went back to the Hilton, all legit. He was lovely and everything. And we were up there having a drink. And I said to him, you have to tell me what this date on Tuesday night is, please. And we're sitting in there. He's got his personalized Louis Vuitton luggage. We're looking out over, I think it's Hyde Park, and I'm just like, this is insane. And he's like, okay, I'll tell you what the date on Tuesday is going to be. It's the London Eye. And I was like, okay, you know, I haven't done the London Eye, but I thought it might be a bit bit better. And he says, no, I've booked the entire London Eye. And I was like, what? Like one capsule? He's like, no, the entire London Eye. It cost 10 grand. And I was like, um, what? And instantly I was obviously texting the girls saying, guys, he's booked the entire London Eye. And everyone's like, oh, London Eye is a bit shit though, isn't it? You know, anyone can go on the London Eye. And I'm like, guys, he's booked the entire wheel. So no one else is allowed. I remember this and we were all like, what are you going to wear? What are you going to wear, Maddie? I know. And at this point I was on a worse salary. I was living in a shithole and I had no nice clothes. Like I think I just wore like a Motel Rocks dress or something. (laughs) Anyway, the next morning he wakes up super early and says, oh dear, I have to rush to Birmingham right now for an urgent business meeting. And I was like, okay. And he says, stay, enjoy the room, have room service, anything you want. I was like, cool. So instantly, as soon as he left, obviously, I rang Kat, my friend, and said, Kat, you got to get to Park Lane Hilton now. We've got free room service. We're going to watch a Sky Cinema and I'm craving a fresh orange juice. So naturally, Kat just jumps straight to the Park Lane Hilton, comes in, we get in our robes, we get our little slippers on and we order room service. It comes to 125 quid. But that's fine because this guy's making 100 million pounds a day or so he says. <laughs> Neck minute. <laughs> so we've, <laughs> we've absolutely taken this guy for a ride. Next minute, it's Tuesday. Everyone in the office it knows about the London Eye date. Everyone in the office is talking about it. What are you wearing? Are you going to do your makeup before you go? Are you going to have a beer before you go to like loosen up? I'm talking about it all day. I've told everyone. So if this doesn't go through, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. And so are the people. So I say to my mate, we come for a wine with me at the pub before we go. She's like, of course. And he's texting me all day saying, can't wait for tonight. Can't wait to see you. Had so much fun. Saturday, even though you rinsed my card, ha ha ha. And I'm like, please, that's chump change to you. Anyway, so we're having a wine, get to the London Eye, and I get a text from him. And it's a photo of him at Gatwick Airport in front of an EasyJet sign. And he says, I'm so sorry, I've had to cancel the London Eye date because I urgently have to fly to Dubai for a business deal. And I'm looking in the background to find a clock. I could see a clock. The clock time matches the time that it currently is. So he's definitely there. And I'm just standing there in my Motel Rocks dress at the London Eye, wondering where I went wrong. Was it when I spent 125 quid 
in his hotel room. Was it when I said that I didn't really think Louis Vuitton luggage was that nice? Was it when I invited Kat over? Wait, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you also do after research to see about the London Eye? And So this is the next part of the story. The next part of the story is that I come into work. Obviously, everyone is dying to hear about the London Eye and how it was. And I say, yeah, it looked good from the ground because he didn't fucking show up. So someone suggests in the team, why don't we ring the London Eye and see if he ever even booked it? And I was like, you know what? So we ring the London Eye. We call it on my work phone on the speakerphone. There's about 20 people crowded around this phone. Everyone's listening in. And this really camp gay guy answers the phone. He's like, hello. I'm like, hello. I think I'm being catfish and I need your help. And he's like, oh, love this. Okay. I'm like, was the London Eye booked the whole London Eye last night for one person? And was his name XYZ? George. He's like, okay, give me a second and I'll check. Puts the hold music on. The whole office is dancing around. People are doing the floss because this was popular at that time. People are doing all kinds of dance moves. People are getting real rowdy to hear about the London Eye. And he comes back. He says, Maddie, Maddie, there was no bookings on the London Eye last night. Oh my God. I know. He lied and he stood me up and I don't know why I believed it was necessary to book every capsule in the London Eye. You can't even really see the other capsules. <laughs> the lie did it for me. Well, yeah. I mean, a once in a lifetime experience, obviously you were saying yes. And the fact that you'd already met the guy, like you had met him and you had seen him in the Park Lane Hotel. That's what I mean. It's not like I wasn't catfished because I know that the bloke was real. I just don't know why he lied about booking the London Eye for me to go on, talking about it so much, and then just tells me he's a Gatwick and has to urgently go to Dubai. I don't know. What an elaborate date. Nobody needs a date that elaborate. I know. I just don't see the point of having every single capsule booked. I feel like there would be cute little tourists, little kids that are coming to London. Mummy, mummy, can we go on the London Eye? Yes, of course, Jacob, we can go on the London Eye. It's an attraction for all, one and all, and we can go on it tonight. And then they show up. It's their only night in London and little Jacob can't even go on the London Eye because George has booked the entire thing out just for me. You're in your motel rocks dress like, "Uh uh-uh, Jacob. (laughs) <laughs> I'm standing there in my motel rock dress just fucking falling apart. I'm like, Jacob, fuck off. <laughs> Shout out to Motel Rocks on here. <laughs> I know, seriously, Motel Rocks, if you want to sponsor the podcast, you're welcome. I'm here all the time. I literally live at home in lockdown. <laughs> just get in touch. So how did you feel after this? So obviously I felt a bit down and the homies were all encouraging me. They're saying, fuck that guy. Don't get in touch with him again. Even if he wants to take you on another date, it's not worth it. I'm like, but guys, we know that he's rich because he took me to Park Lane and I want to take him for a ride because he's taken me for a ride. It's not very nice, is it? And speaking of not very nice, I thought we could go on to a little bit more of a serious stand-up story. Um, which is why I invited you to come on the show and chat about it. So if you want to, I'll throw it over to you and maybe you can run us through your date, which occurred a few weeks ago. I sure can. So, I mean, being new to the dating world, possibly there was a few red flags I could have picked up on on this, but hey ho, let's, I'll tell the story and, you know, see what, see what the listeners think. I matched with this guy on Hinge. Um, His name was, he seemed very normal. If you're out there listening, if this podcast gets famous, I want the people to go and find this, by the way. I mean, same. So anyway, he he matches with me and he's very direct straight away. He's literally like, hey, you're like the perfect Aussie girl I've been looking for this whole time. Please, can I take you out this Friday? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to Thought Park this Friday. Long story short. Then he's like, well, when can I take you out? Please, can I take you out? And I I think at this point it was like Wednesday. So he's trying to do like a date in two days time. I was like, well, next week I think I'm free on Tuesday, right? So I was like, yeah, cool. Like Tuesday. He's like, cool, book it in, lock me in. I've got an amazing idea. What's your WhatsApp so I can text you? He instantly messages me on there and he's like, hey, Sam, so excited for our date on Tuesday. I've already booked it. You're going to have such a great time. Can't wait to take you out. It's going to be even better than Thorpe Park. 
And Maddie, there's not a lot better than Thorpe Park, I would have to say. There's not a lot better than Thorpe Park. We went a few weeks ago and it was probably one of the most fun things I've done in a while. But to be honest, I haven't done that much fun things in a while because it's a pandemic. That's true too. So anyway, I'm like, wow, this guy's putting in a lot of effort, Thorpe. Most of my other dates so far from Hinge have just been meet me at this pub at this time. And you know what? They're all good and fine. But I was like really intrigued by this guy's effort, right? I do like the effort. I am a huge fan of effort. I think, and have you ever seen on Hinge and that sort of thing that the guys that say won't message first? Okay, well, if you don't message first and I don't message first, who's messaging? What are we doing here? What's the point? Yeah, I I don't get that at all. So anyway, the, the following week goes on. He literally is messaging me. I think more than like my ex-boyfriend ever messaged. He will (laughs) every hour on the hour. And when he doesn't message, he like apologizes. I was like, guys, he's freaking me out a little bit. He texts almost too much for the fact that we haven't met. But anyway, I was like, okay, he still says like we were having this amazing surprise. So I was like, you know what? Go with the flow, Sam. Stop being boring. Go on this date. So the day comes around. He's texting me literally again all day long. He's being like, can't wait to see you. This is going to be so fun. He's like, I know this sounds lame, but I just know the date's going to go so well. Um, Can I also say it was two or three days before we went back into super lockdown. So this was one of my last free nights, right? Yeah. So you, you're sacrificing a lot here to sort of go out on a limb with a guy that you don't know, but he seems like a genuine guy. And what from what you told me, you did your research, LinkedIn, Instagram, all that sort of stuff, all the usual background checks that you run. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he'd messaged me so much, he's sending me photos. He's a real guy. He's not a catfish. And catfishes, I would have to say catfishes are quite rare. I mean, I know that everyone gets their fair share of catfishes, but when I say rare, I mean, believable catfishes. Like you get a catfish instantly and it's some model from LA and it's like, used to play professional NBA. Now I just have abs and do modeling and work out at Venice beach all the time, just over here for a weekend. You're just instantly like this guy's fake. But when the guy's not even a 10, you're like, obviously he's real. He was pushing a six. <laughs> like, <laughs> a push. A push. He was, he's quite tall. It said he was six two. So that's quite good. And I was like, maybe he's better looking in person. Also, he's putting all this effort in. So you know what? Sam was like, let's just do it. And all my friends were like trying to make guesses of what it's going to be. We were like, oh, it's mini golf. He's taking you to some ping pong thing. I don't know. Everyone's guessing. People are on their toes, right? Then I get a text at like 2 p.m. in the day and he's like, I'm really sorry, some really bad news, but unfortunately the activity I wanted to do has been cancelled because of COVID. And I was like, well, what was it? And he goes, oh, it was to take you go-karting. And I'd already asked if I needed to wear something in particular. And he said, no, no, just wear your usual nice clothes, no problem. So I'm like, pretty fuming about the fact that he hasn't told me that we were going go-karting because I mean yeah and you're not you're not exactly going to wear trainers to like any old date you know but I feel like it's a trainer sort of vibe what if you showed up in over the knee stiletto boots or like a mesh top with your nipples out or like crotchless undies he doesn't know what you normally wear so anyway I was just like oh that would have been so fun but that's a shame and he goes don't worry I've got a backup plan I've booked vagabond wines in Charlotte Street so I was like oh that's nice he's already thought about it he's already booked something else So again, still, I'm like, all the efforts here. I have a bit of a manic day at work. I jumped on the train at probably like 5.40. So I already knew I was going to be like 15 minutes late. So I texted him and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. I'm going to be 15 minutes late. And he was like, no problem. I'm at a bar around the corner with workmates anyway. Let me know when you're 10 minutes away. So I'm about 10 minutes away. So I messaged and I said, hey, I'm about 10 minutes away. Just walking up to Vagabond now. Get to the wine bar. And I'm like, hey, there's a booking here under... And I'm kind of looking around to see if I can see him, but I can't. And anyway, then the guy goes, oh, follow me. So he takes me over to the table and it says loud and clear on the table. I'm like, oh, cool. His table's here. Fine. So I just messaged. I was like, hey, I'm here. Still, he's not there. And by this point, it's like 20 past six. And mind you, he made the booking for 6 p.m. So I message you and Dan. and I'm like, oh, my God, guys, he's not here. And both of you were like, don't worry. He's clearly just held up with his work friends. It's not a problem. I then like go back into his message, his WhatsApp. And uh, lo and behold, he has blocked me, Maddie. Oh my God, I remember now. I can't find his photo. Text won't go through. And and then Dan was like, oh, maybe he just got mugged or something. So I'm like, Dan, can you check his contact? So I send Dan the contact and Dan's like, girl, he blocked you. <laughs> so Dan says... Maybe he got mugged and then the mugger went into his phone, (laughs) selected on you and selected block and then stole the phone. (laughs) 
<laughs> pretty much that is what the mugger must have done. <laughs> Those naughty muggers, they will do anything to fuck up people's lives, I swear. <laughs> but not block Dan. So anyway, then I'm, we call him off Dan's phone and then Dan gets blocked. <laughs> Oh, then I obviously leave the bar instantly because I'm absolutely humiliated and so confused. Oh, Sam. I know. It's such a weird feeling. Like, I felt a bit scared as well. I was like, is he watching me? Is he here somewhere? Yeah, it's kind of, do you imagine, like, if he didn't look like that, is he, like, sitting in the bar watching you? Is he going to, like, follow you? I know this is grim, but, like, is he going to follow you home or that sort of thing? Like, it is kind of scary. And this guy's obviously, like, a total sicko. Yeah, obviously. So then I called you and you were luckily in town. So we just met up and got pizza thank god so you know that made it the trip worth it at least I got to hang out with you but when we were at the dinner do you remember we we were wondering if he was a catfish and he didn't even look like his images but then we checked his hinge and his Instagram was linked to the hinge so there's just some guy out there with his real name his real hinge his real Instagram all connected with his real whatsapp just organizing dates with people and then not showing up and blocking him no and also no way to contact him anymore well so we think so then I I basically found him on Instagram I want you to know that you've been a bit of a shit um so I just messaged and said in the future please be kind to others last night was fucked up and so rude of you grow up grow up grow up is gonna be the funniest insult it just hurts so much it's all very confusing and I'm sorry it happened because it's just puts you in such a bad headspace for especially coming out of a breakup recently and moving forward with other dates and stuff. It's just so demotivating like when people are so disappointing, isn't it? I'm quite a positive person. So I was able to just be like, you know what, let's look at this funny side of it and just say that was super weird, I guess. I hopefully remind other people that like, if this does happen, it's not on you. It's on them. They're the weird one. I was reading a lot of stuff about this after you um, told me the story and while I was doing some research for the podcast. And I think if it is some kind of sociopath or a psychopath who's going out there doing this sort of stuff, the reason that it's so easy to fall for people like that is because they are so charming and they do seem so normal because they, they're they just mimicking other people's behavior. So it's not like you should feel bad about that happening to you because that's the exact kind of people that you would believe and you would fall for. Yeah, a bit of a Ted Bundy situation, I guess. Bit of, a, bit of a Ted Bundy. That's Ted Bundy's second reference in the podcast. I feel like he should become a sponsor. <laughs> Ted Bundy, where you at? Where you at? Hit me up. <laughs> um, I won't tell the police. Um, anyway, so the next segment of the show, which is a new segment based on a little bit of feedback we had on wanting there to be a bit more chat around the subject that we've spoken about. So we've called this segment Left on Red because – being left on red makes you question your relationships, it makes you question yourself, it makes you question your entire universe sometimes. So we thought, um, I thought I'd turn to Instagram and ask the people what they wanted to know about being stood up. So first of all, would you ever allow someone to reschedule if they stood you up? Would you ever allow them to reschedule? So no, absolutely not after that because I was all the way there. I think so rude. I would never even speak to the person again. But reschedule in general, I think it really depends on when they've messaged to ask to reschedule, two hours before, eight hours before, the day before. Yeah, I agree. I think in your situation when they've clearly done something that's just twisted and blocked you it would be a no but then I think maybe for my um my fake name George who booked the London Eye I'd probably give him the benefit of the doubt because I had actually already met him and it would be interesting to see how it all panned out but yeah I don't think other than that I would allow someone to reschedule if they've just treated you with disrespect. Yeah, exactly. Um, And then in terms of next steps after it happens to you and how do you respond, I've been doing some reading and I found a really good article on psychology today which had seven steps after somebody shames you and I think it can be repurposed really well for a situation like this. What you did actually loosely followed this sort of approach. Number one was take your time to respond. So don't retaliate straight away. Just take yourself out of the situation. Have a think about the way that you want to respond before doing it. So I think you definitely did that. And then um, number two would be don't take it personally. So obviously, like as you said, it's not your fault that it happened. It's just someone out there who's doing it to get a kick for themselves. Who knows what happened to him? Like we could be sitting here talking shit about him and it turns out he's had something really horrible happen to him and we would never know. 
Number three, get out of the situation. So I think you removed yourself pretty quickly from that situation, which was definitely a positive thing. And then number four, understanding the other person's motivation. So I know this is hard when you don't know the person and he blocked you. So it's not like you can really get an explanation, but I suppose trying or attempting to have empathy at least just makes you a bigger person than this person and what they've done to you. Number five is know that you're not alone. I mean, it happened to me, it happened to you. In the group chat, Harriet said it happened to her, our other friend, and I think it's happened to stories like this happen to the best of us, hence the reason for even starting the podcast. Number six is be careful about retaliating. So I think sending a message, obviously you just have to do what's best for you, but sending a message to him and like letting him know that you were hurt and that he should be kind to people in the future, I think that was that was a fine decision, like a good way for you to move forward, which is brings me to number seven which was finding a way to move forward so I think getting back on the horse because you've been on another couple of dates this week which have actually turned out to be really nice yeah yeah I don't know I think in terms of yeah next steps after it happens to you I think what you did was pretty bang on with what psychology today recommends but um I don't know what do you think no I mean I think that's pretty correct yeah I was a bit you know at first I was a bit embarrassed and then I went through a phase of just getting angry I was like I'm just so angry that he wasted so much of my time time is money babe (laughs) (laughs) I got better people to spend time with honestly and I think the second night before lockdown 2.0 is a bloody precious night it's precious as not good enough and then what would you say would be an acceptable reason to stand somebody up? I mean, I think there's like the usual ones, like you got injured or something on your way or like Mm -hmm. your cat or dog got sick. If you run over a cat on your way to the date. That probably, yes. (laughs) It depends how far in advance, you know. I had someone cancel on me actually on the weekend and his excuse was, I'm tired. I was like, have a nap. He messaged me the next day and he goes, hey, um, so do you want to come over and spoon? And I was like, no, I do not. You cancelled our date. We've never met. You're in the bin now. Oh, my God. I think we need to do a whole other episode about guys that ask you to come over and spoon. It's Literally, no, I don't want to come over and spoon. I don't know you. Like, I don't even really like spooning people I like. How long would you wait for somebody to show up? And let's, first of all, let's do first date and then girlfriend or boyfriend. So first date, how long would you wait? Oh, if I assume they're coming and they've been, like, texting and giving me time updates max probably 20 minutes yeah I think I would only wait half an hour but then I was talking to my housemate Rob and he said once he waited for his girlfriend for a whole hour with no text no nothing and it was lucky he did because she got lost and her phone had died but if someone left me in limbo for an hour I would be absolutely out of there And then um, the last two, I think we sort of spoke about this last question from someone, should you take it personally? And I think you absolutely shouldn't take it personally because there's nothing, like you did your due diligence, you did the safe thing when you're going out with someone from Hinge or Tinder, you did your background checks. To be honest, this guy probably does this to lots of different people. And then the last question from someone was, how do you stop it from getting you down? So I think this kind of comes into number seven on that list of tips if this happens to you, finding a way to move forward. So I guess the best thing that you did was sort of get back on the horse because I know it was so demotivating, especially when it happened. You're like, I'm not going on a date again. Like this is humiliating, blah, blah, blah. But I think once you sort of get that faith, it's like getting cheated on or something. Once you get the faith back from someone else after losing it, it sort of makes the whole process a bit easier. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I, I mean, I scheduled a date pretty quickly in for like the following week and he showed up, guys. Hooray. And you know what? Good on you because I actually do think that is super brave. It is so hard to put yourself out there, especially like in the middle of a pandemic when everyone's super stressed and there's a lot going on and all that sort of thing just not letting something like this and some asshole get the better of you it's just so important percentage wise i'm still doing better where they do show up right the stats don't lie sam and it's nothing but a numbers game out here in london (laughs) okay well unless there's anything else you wanted to chat about that's all the questions that we've had from people but i think you will be a regular guest on the show as we've got a lot of history together and a lot of fun stories to go through so thank you very much for joining us thank Thank you so much for having me mads hopefully we get some interesting stories back love you bye well guys another week in lockdown down if you liked this week's show subscribe rate and review and most importantly tell your mates get in touch with me on instagram it's at madsworld.mp3 and submit any questions you'd like me and my guests to answer or let me know what you thought of the show uh, yeah see you next week love and elbow taps peace
Thank you.